that is, the Lord wants to amplify His voice and so that the crowd can look at Him. Basahin ang ginawa niyang podio, the boat itself. So, that is the same place, kumbaga. And, sabi niya ganun doon sa mga disciples, tara na, pumunta muna tayo sa kabila because the, the people are following me. Sabi niya ganun. So, they decided to go. But as they go, nagkaroon nga ng malaking storm. Okay. So, kung mapapansin niyo, yan nga yung ano, bayin yung itsura niya. Uh, maganda sana kung itang-kita na yun. So, pabilog siya. Pero there is a connection between Uh, ito siya eh. Ito yung Sea of Galilee, tapos ito yung Dead Sea. And these are valleys. So siguro tatanong niya, saan nagkagaling yung tubig? Is it coming from the Dead Sea? No, it's the opposite. Yung, nag- yung tubig na napupunta sa Dead Sea, galing siya sa Sea of Galilee. From, from the valley, going to the Sea of Galilee, and then it goes to the Dead Sea. Kasi nga sa Dead Sea, dead yun eh. Walang, hindi lumalabas yung tubig doon. So, pababa siya gano'n. Hindi siya pataas, pababa. Okay? So, what's the significance? The significance ito is so that we could understand yung, yung picture nung, nung lake, kung gano'n ba kalaki yung lake. And then, as, as I mentioned, nasa surrounded siya ng almost like hills and mountains. So, there is a big body of water. At doon nga sila sabi ng Panginoon, tumawid tayo doon sa kabila. And uh, there are some people who are saying, uh, The reason why the Lord Jesus Christ would like to uh, cross over is so that He could somehow uh, have some uh, uh, magpahinga, rest, di ba sabi? Pero actually, if you would read it, the, the moment that they cross over, the very first thing na ginawa ng Panginoon is He cast out demon dun sa, 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 dun sa isang nakatalong lalaki. So basically, ang Panginoon walang hinto. Sa, uh, he doesn't stop in doing His ministry. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at the word muna that was being used. On verse 39, He said, Then He arose and rebuked the wind, and He said to the sea, be, uh, Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. You know, the word, you know, the word na rebuke dyan, actually three times lang ginamit ni Mark. Nung sumulat ito ang ating pinag-aaralan. And three times na ginamit ito, it was referred to rebuking the devil. The first time that he used this uh, was in Mark chapter, uh, I mean, uh, hindi, siya, hindi Matthew, Mark. Mark chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. Uh, can we, can, let's try to, yeah, lang ako ba? Let me just double check. So Mark chapter 1, verses 23 to 25. Sign ko lang ha. Kasi meron lang akong point out. Mark chapter 23. Uh, ito, sabi niya ganon. Mark chapter, chapter 1, verse 23. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit uh, and he cried out saying, let, let us alone. What have we, uh, what we do to you, uh, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who, who you are, the Holy One of God. So verse 25, sabi ka, but Jesus rebuked him, saying, be quiet and come out of him. So the first time na ginamit ni Mark, yung word na rebuke, was when, he, when the Lord Jesus Christ rebuked or cast out a demon. Okay, so the first time na ginam, nung nag-report si Mark, nung, nagsu- nung sinulat niya yung gospel, okay, the word review, first time niya ginamit is to cast out demon. And then on the second time, on uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 11 to, to 12, mali na naman, Matthew, uh, it's Mark. Uh, sabi ka na sa 11, in a clean spirit, when they saw him, he fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And then on verse 12, he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. Basically, itong word na ginamit dito, straightly charged, saka yung review, is the same Greek word, eptimao. Eptimao. Yun yung Greek word na ginamit. Uh, so that basically means rebuking the devil. And the third time na ginamit niya to is when he reported Jesus Christ rebuked the wind. So what is that simply telling us right now? 
you need to be the point of thought. The first thing is, look at the lessons previously. They were discussing about Satan. The second thing, it was all normal. Things is all normal. And then all of a sudden, there was a storm. Something fishy. And the third thing, na ginamit ni Mark, is the word review. And it was being referred to the devil, Satan. So, we, sabi nga nila sa, 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 sa Musgado, if you have three collaborating ano, uh, uh, specimen, it is most likely, it is pointing to that same situation. So, basically what I'm trying to say here is that that storm is not a regular storm. It was made by, or it was uh, produced by the devil himself. Siguro tatanungin ninyo, uh, pwede ba mangyari yan? Of course. Remember, the intention of the Lord Jesus Christ was to cross to the other side to ano, what to do? Uh, ano yung gusto gawin ng Panginoon? It's to share the gospel. Di ba? To reach out to those people. And the enemy is like a roaring lion. He would like to stop anything for the ministry. And siguro kung tatanungin natin, if you're going to ask ourselves, it is the same for us. Now sometimes we are doing the work, we are doing the ministry, but the enemy will continue to stop us. Diba? Siguro tatanungin nyo, uh, bakit ganon? Uh, kasama naman nila ang Panginoon. They, they, the, the Lord Jesus Christ is with them. Why is it that they still encounter the storm? Well, the truth of the matter is, God will allow. Inaalaw ng Lord yung mga bagay na to, you know, all these things to happen in our time. You know, the problems that you're having right now, the storm in your life, God allows it. Yes. Diba? Uh, inaala Remember Job? Diba? Inalaw ng Lord na magkaroon ng storm si Job sa buhay niya because of uh, he wants to showcase yung, yung faith ni Job. Okay, so now we know that the source is the enemy. Now let's look at the situation. Uh, let's look at the situation. What about the situation? Now that we know, let us, let us try to study our second point. You know, I guess reading the, our main text in a shallow manner without looking at the surrounding verses can easily make us jump to a conclusion uh, that this is a very a simple case of faith issue. You know, uh, it basically teaches us to practice our faith, and if we do so, nothing bad can happen to us. Siguro, this is the very first thing na naisip niya, oh, ano yun, yung, yung, yung chapter na yan, ang gusto lang ituro sa atin ng Lord dyan is for us to, you know, uh, practice our faith. Yeah. Actually, in some, in, in some sense, it was true, but it's not the completeness. Hindi ito yung totality. We see a lot of people who follow the Lord, but in return, things happen unexpectedly. Diba? Nalaman pala tayo naman ako, Lord. But how come? May mga ganun pa rin problema. I was, I, pwede yung mga ibang tao, Lord, I'm so faithful. But how is it that I still lost my grandmother? Faithful naman ako, Lord, pero bakit nawalan ako ng trabaho? Faithful naman ako, pero bakit nangyayari yung mga bagay na ito? Why is all these things happening? Financial crisis, job loss, family matters, financial matters, hunger, calamity, and much opposition and discouragement. Lord, faithful naman kami, ha? pero bakit nadilubi yung aming bahay sa Pilipinas? Faithful naman itong church na to, pero bakit lahat namatay nung nagkaroon ng, ng hurricane? Diba? In short, uh, the thing is, things do happen. And the Lord knows everything. You know, uh, one thing that I can conclude is that all of us face different degree of difficulties in our life. But that I do not dance about All of us passes all this typhoon in our life. Maring iba sa atin si number one. Si Ate Norma siguro si na number two. Una man number three. Di iba si na number two. So iba iba. You know, iba iba yung situation. We have different situation. And we could also, sabi ko nga, therefore conclude that all of us, somewhere and someday, will face our own storm in our life. You know, life doesn't end. It's a part of our life, yung storm. And this storm represents the problems 
in our time. So the question now, the big question, are we going up to my third point? Hindi ako magtatagal ngayon. My third point is the solution. Kasi meron tayong problem. We have the problem. We know the source. The source is giving us all this problem. We know the situation. And what is the solution? Okay. Now that we know that the enemy is like a roaring lion looking always to devour us, to scare us or to rattle us, to get our attention and focus not on the ordinance of God as bestowed upon us. We can now say that despite of our being close to God or obeying His will, we can never be accepted. Diba? So, two things na gusto kong matandaan ninyo. Number one, the enemy is always on the lookout. He would like to destroy each and every one of us. Regardless of how, uh, what ways he will do. He could send us the big storm in our life. For what very purpose to destroy us. And number two that I would like us to understand is that we are not exempted. Even us being Christian right now, we will still pass all these typhoons or all these storms in our life. Challenges. Things happen and it happens because God's allowed it to happen for a reason. And I guess the question right now is how should we respond in, in the facts of life? And with, uh, and with that, let me share three couple of things. Number one, the first thing that we need to do when there is a storm in our life is this. The solutions. Understanding the power of God. And today, I think third point. Uh, number one solution, to relax and not to rattle. <laughs> and even you say, to relax and not to rattle. Um, you know, the, uh, why do we need to relax? 